Hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Atute here, and I am so, so excited to be catching up with Nina Samuels. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you today? Uh, yeah, not bad. It's uh, it's not quite as sunny here today um, in England as it has been over the last week. So, But I knew that was coming, so I sort of made sure that I got all my vitamin D in last week, made sure I went for like my daily park walks, getting that lovely oxygen, because um, I realized that this week was probably not going to be as good of an opportunity. Other than going for your walks and trying to get the vitamin D in, what are some things that you have been doing to pass the time? Because as we were kind of saying before we started recording, yeah. we're almost at the point where we're, we're losing our minds a little bit. <laughs> 100%. Um, so I've been doing I've been doing a lot of baking and cooking, um, which is something that I've sort of fallen out of over, over over the last few years. I got into a rut of just always eating the same things. And then baking would just be like a treat that I'd do when I was around my mum's because I knew she had all the tins or the equipment. I right. was comfortable with her oven. Um, so, yeah, I've sort of taken taken baking up again, which has been really really fun but um the downside is I'm not baking as much as I would like to because um it's only me and my other half in the house and he's very good and very strict with his diet so anything that I bake I have to eat pretty much all myself so um whereas I see like some friends who are doing a different bake every day because they've got six people in the house to split it between I'm sort of getting through one a week and eating the same thing sort of every day as my daily treat (laughs) I know that other than baking as well something that you took up again was playing the guitar and you mentioned you know you you posted a photograph and you're like hey I haven't done this in a while let's try it again now that I have time so how are things coming along have you stuck with it has it kind of faded away a little bit since then um I have to definitely say I'm guilty of the latter so I um, (laughs) am I I was like oh lockdown's gonna be the perfect time to pick my guitar up again because I probably hadn't played for about three years um I hadn't even touched my guitar for about three years but then I looked at my fingernails and you know I used to be really bad with biting my fingernails so that was perfect for playing the guitar because if you've got long nails you just have no hope at all so I was like yeah I'm gonna get on to playing the guitar I looked down and realized that I still had my nail shellacked from the last set of tapings that we did so I was like right okay I need to let them peel off um eventually got them off and then I I started playing again for for a few days trying out some different different songs contemplated recording some stuff did test runs and decided not to release it maybe 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 on a better day I will release something um but then I I, someone asked me this the other day and I looked down at the nails on my left hand and I realized they've actually got quite long so without realizing it I've clearly not kept up the guitar because I would not be able to play a single chord with my nails like they are right now. <laughs> Who were some of those go-to bands or songs or when you would play and you had the shorter, more accessible nails for it? And um, what were some of the bands that you absolutely love jamming to? Um, so I used to play a lot of um, sort of Oasis songs. Um, the first song I ever learned to play was um, Nirvana, Come As You Are. So that was when I think I got my first guitar when I was about 14 or or 15. So that was the sort of music I was listening to then. Um, The most recent song that I learned to play was I got the WrestleMania bug bug, and I learned um, Edge's theme tune. Um, Did you really? I did, (laughs) yeah. Amazing. (laughs) It was something that I I contemplated releasing ahead of WrestleMania, but then I didn't know what day each matches were on and getting the right acoustics in in my flat. Like, I think I was... You see a lot of people like recording music like in their shower and in their bathroom honestly it definitely has the best acoustics so I was like trying out camera angles like sitting on the edge of my bath um but yeah I didn't, didn't quite end up um coming out but yeah so Edge's theme tune was the was the most recent one um that I learned another one I was learning was um an Alessia Cara song called Here which is oh, um yeah. so that's my entrance music for some a lot of the non-WWE shows that I do so um I thought that would be a fun one to learn as well but literally a mix of everything from like stuff like seal kiss from a rose to sea songs um like i said like oasis blur things like that so a huge mixture no it's cool when people have such an eclectic music taste because i never know where they're going to go with their answer for certain music questions and something i actually discovered about you is we both have the exact same first concert which is spice (laughs) girl wow where where did you see them I saw them in Toronto. My mom took me when I was three years old. So it was back in 1998. So oh, wow. yeah, 
that was my first gig. And so when I saw that was yours, I was like, I need to bring this up because, you know, <laughs> we're all living in that Spice World still. <laughs> so much. I was obsessed with the Spice Girls when I was younger. So Sporty Spice was my favorite. So I would order like all the exact same track suits that she had. Um, I'd, I'd try and get hold of all of those. Me and my best friend were both Spice Girls obsessed. And with a bunch of our, like, our, our girlfriends, we had like, had this intention of putting on this huge like Spice Girls tribute show I say huge I mean like probably in our local sports center for all of about 15 people including our mums um and we like made microphones out of toilet out of toilet rolls and coated them in black paper before we realized whatever black paper we had was like rubbing off on our hands so every time we'd do practice with our fake microphones we'd have like black all over our hands afterwards um, and we had this plan that mama was going to be the finale and we'd all like give out bouquets of flowers to our mums. Um, alas, it never actually happened. But yeah, I was absolutely Same. spice mad. You would have had 16 people in the crowd because you could count me in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Perfect. that's bigger than some wrestling crowds that I've had. So, you know, it's not not bad. Right. It actually isn't too bad when you think of it in comparison to that. Um, yeah. So I was curious, since we are talking about Spice Girls, what would your Spice Girls name be? Did you have one growing up when you were going to do the tribute band? I was just all in on Sporty Spice. So it wasn't about like creating my own sort of Spice persona or anything like that. I just wanted to be Sport, Sporty Spice. Had Yeah, all, all the, all the tracksuits. And me and my friend would fight over who was going to be Sporty Spice. And whoever like lost the coin toss or whatever that day had to be posh spice because she was the one that no one no one wanted to be. Um, yeah, if that's, if, that's if, true. If, if if it was making a Spice Girl group now, um, me and Jenny have had this conversation. I know she would a hundred percent be in there with wanting to be posh spice. So, but back at, back when I was younger, posh spice was the reject one that none of us wanted to be. Which is funny because I'm I'm speaking with Jenny and um on Wednesday, so I'm gonna have to bring that up to her and say, by the yeah. way, I can actually. <laughs> And is it strange that I could see her being posh because she's like the fashionista? She has that completely down. It's kind of um, weird. A hundred percent. It's like she's like a, a modern day Victoria Beckham of the wrestling world. Um, but yeah, so of course posh was going to be her number one pick. <laughs> now we of course have to talk a little bit about WWE NXT UK. Yes. How does it feel knowing that you are completely branded and you are pretty much always going to be called a WWE superstar? I mean, a lot of people, um, there's a lot of weight to that name when it's bestowed upon someone. Even if you're with the company for a year or forever, you're always mm -hmm. going to have that in your history. So um, what does that kind of mean to you in, in an essence? It's it's unreal. Like so when I first decided that I wanted to be a wrestler. I had no idea about any wrestling except for WWE. WWE was all I'd watched. Um, I didn't know about any of the British, British independent scene or anything. So when I decided that I was going to be a wrestler, like it was as if WWE was the only option. So straight away I was looking up, okay, well, how do I apply for a job in WWE? Because I thought that's, you know, the only way that you do it. Um, obviously it, it took longer to get there than I anticipated, but I'm, grateful for that because I found a wonderful independent scene but so because that had always been the goal when it finally happened it was such huge gratification for me it was like everything had all been worth it I mean it took a bit longer for me because um I was part of the first NXT UK roster and um, when it became NXT UK but um I wasn't actually signed to a WWE contract until months and months along the line so the majority of the roster were and I was just sort of being brought in effectively as an extra every time but with the exact same treatment as the roster um the only difference was the contract so that was hard to begin with because everyone was, would sort of be congratulating me like oh congrats on getting signed so I was like I'm, I'm not um <laughs> But it just made me sort of, you know, there were times when you feel down about it, like, you know, everyone else is signed and I'm not. But I was just like, I, they wouldn't be keeping me here if it wasn't for a reason. So I'm just going to keep my head down, keep working, constantly ask for feedback. Because, you know, at the time we had Triple H and Shawn Michaels coming to every single taping. So there aren't that many better people <laughs> that you could have at your disposal to ask for feedback and get better. Um, so I kept doing that. And then when the contract finally came, it was just that much sweeter because I felt like 
I'd really had to prove myself by, by that point. So yeah, unreal. And as you say now, it's something that you can say forever. Like when people ask you what you do and you're sort of explaining a wrestler and they're like, oh, like WWE. And to anyone who isn't involved in the wrestling world, a lot of people don't have much knowledge outside of that. So it's hard explaining what you do without being in WWE. But now you can just say, yeah, I work for WWE. It's great. <laughs> no, that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, there was a point in time where I saw a bunch of you girls over there getting signed and brought on and I had interviewed a lot of you prior and it just made me so happy seeing like <laughs> oh my gosh they're actually getting that opportunity after working their butts off for so long so yeah again congr- yeah. I know it's been a minute but congratulations again it's awesome thank you thank you you're welcome now let's talk needs more Nina because I have to know when did you realize <laughs> when did you realize that everything just needs more Nina it's um I love every time you use it it just cracks me up um <laughs> It was sort of a bit of a slow process. I think when I when I first came to WWE, I in my head I thought, oh, I've got my character, I've got my my gimmick. But I think when you're um, put on a sort of in a weekly episodic format, you steadily realise where the holes in your character are. And you know, I'd start getting a lot of comparisons to other to other people, and I was thinking, oh, okay, well, I need to find a way to make myself stand out and really hone in on something. And People like someone who is who has been one of my favorites to watch in the last sort of ten years or so has been has been the Miz. Like I, I've always just loved his character stuff. Like he is entertainment personified, and I just found that I would really be able to invest in the stories that he was doing. And then so I sort of thought, okay, well that's what I identify with in terms of characters, and I actually have a dancing, singing, and acting background. So I thought, well how about I sort of channel a sort of a female version of the Miz's persona kind of, but into in a theatrical way. And then from there, it just sort of spiraled. I'd have various discussions with creative about certain ideas. And I mean, one of our um, writers used to be working the West End himself. So he totally got all of the theatrical references that I was going with. And he was able to sort of help me asking me questions and if I didn't know the answer I'd be like okay well I need to answer that about my character and everything just sort of spiraled from there on I can't remember how the my sort of new hashtag needs more Nina came about um it might have been a fan actually that that um tweeted it but it just seemed to fit fit perfectly um and yeah I'm having so much fun with it because I think I've sort of found my own niche in NXT UK now and there's no one else doing a sort of same character as me which means I've got all these other possibilities for what I can do and how to make things different that's so exciting I've just loved seeing the growth with everybody there because you do watch a lot of these people on the indies and then you see all the ways that they improve their characters that were already Mm -hmm. good but now they're just polished Um, so uh, something as little as a, a hashtag can really just channel that mm-hmm. that cockiness um yeah. and I mean that in the most wonderful of ways <laughs> yeah, I'll take it that's fine <laughs> um and, and the confidence that your character always carries so yeah I think it's fantastic during, during lockdown as well I've um I've been watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race everyone had always told me about it and me too it sounded like the sort of program that I should that I would love but I just never got around to watching it um but yeah so I'm so into RuPaul's Drag Race now so I've already been in touch with like my sort of ring gear designers and things and ordered certain props. So um, any RuPaul's Drag Race fans might see particular references and some work when we finally come out of this. I'm excited to see that. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on here, for hanging out. I'm so happy that uh, we were able to do this. So thank you. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. It's been lovely. My absolute pleasure. Thank you to Nina a ton for hopping on. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for more exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.